Have you thought about building a pool barn home or maybe you call it a shallow or a barn dominium or a shome, whatever term you might use. In this video, we're gonna talk about the five main things to look at when looking at a pool barn home in 2021. Hi, my name is Kurt Baylor. I'm the VP of Marketing at FBI Buildings. And before we get into the five things you need to look at for building a pole barn home, I want to get into why might you want to build a pole barn home? And there's some benefits that people mostly know about. And one might be it's kind of a very in style. It's kind of that shabby chic, more retro, old barn feel um, look that you can get in your building that is very in demand and very in style right now that a lot of people like. The second main reason this is one of the big ones is you're able to build a very wide open tall open spaces, which a lot of people like and makes it very, very flexible for interior walls, interior layouts and designs for your building, which is a, a big benefit of pole barns because you don't have the stud walls restrictions as much because you have columns on the sides and then very open interiors open to whatever you want to do. And then one of the other reasons that makes the pole barn very, very attractive is the steel roofing, which is a lot longer longevity than shingles on your building that you can put on a house, but it comes standard for a post frame building as well. So those are some three big reasons um, why people like pole barn homes. And the, th and the fourth one being that a lot of people perceive them to be less money than a stick built house. And that might be true in some cases, might not be true in other cases, depending on how you design and develop your pole barn home. Those are kind of the four main reasons. So with that, we'll get into factor number one that you wanna look for in regards to a pole barn home. Factor number one is pull barn financing. And this might be a boring one to talk about, but it's extremely critical. So if you do not have the funds to build a pull barn home, like most people don't when they're building a home, you're gonna need some sort of financing. And depending what county you live in or what state you live in, this can be different for everybody. So it's extremely important that you talk to the bank or whoever you're looking for a lender, um, whoever's gonna give you a loan, that you understand are they open to the idea of a pull barn home or are they not? Because a, a lot of banks or um, lending companies are not comfortable with that idea. So you wanna make sure you have a route that is going to work for you before you get too far down the road and you might have to pull back or rethink your plan. So we don't want you to waste time. So make sure you're looking into financing and talking to pull barn companies. There might be some options they can help you out as well from a builder standpoint, but always looking into this in the first step can save you a lot of time down the road before you realize that your county or your state might not give you the financing that you need. The second main factor is acquiring land or determining your building location. Now this does affect your financing, which is in point number one, depending on if you're in city limits, what county or state you're going to be building your building at. So there is some overlap there as well as it will affect your total project budget. Depending on where you're building can affect how much your excavation costs are gonna be. Do you need to bring in dirt or gravel or stone to level it out? Um, how hard is it for your builder to get there? And then also utilities from water to electrical, um, to anything like that for your project is how much is it gonna be to get utilities to that site if it's out in the country or if it's in the city. So all these things can greatly influence your project budgeting, which can help you understand if it's something you can do or if there's a different route you need to look at. The third main factor is permitting. And now this is really important and why it's after determining your building location is that will determine your permitting needs. And this can be a wide ranging things in regards to how your county is looking at. You might have restrictions to your property, um, easements, or even building height restrictions that your county or location, depending if it's a city or country might have. And then from there, you also need to make sure you can get a permit and the cost to procure a permit is also very important. Some counties can have more restrictions on pole barn homes, other counties might have none, but it's really important that when you're thinking about the next step, which is building a layout design that you're within your restrictions for your your land or your height or your easement restrictions to make sure that you're not gonna have the issues need a permit later on. And the fourth step is the one that everybody wants to do and everyone's excited about, which is your building layout and design. But it's so important before you get into this and create your vision and what you want to get the first three steps done. Because once you can secure your loan and know what you can get from a cost standpoint, then you know your building location and then you know your permitting requirements. You can design a building perfect to fit within all those scopes, which can save you so much time on the back end for just having to redesign or redevelop when you don't know those first three. So once you have that, that, you can talk to your builder and you can talk to the project sales consultant you're working with. They can help you create a 3D drawing, layout and design and really bring your vision to life and get their expertise to make sure you're designing something perfect to what your needs are. And the last one and the fifth one is getting a builder to bring your vision to life. And so this is a big one because you want to know who you're going to work with 
to help you through the entire process. So this is really assembling a construction crew. And if you're working with a project sales consultant, as we talked about early on, you might know who you want to work with during this process before step five. But once you have all the rest of it, you're bringing all that information to a builder. You're bringing the layout, wanting to get an estimate and a price for what is this going to cost me? You know what your budget can be. And you can really have critical conversations with whoever that builder may be for you on bringing this vision to life and then making sure they have the crew power, also the backlog to get it built when you need to get it built. And then once you're done with all of that, you can bring your entire vision of your pole barn home to life for you and your family in the future. For more information on your pole barn home, feel free to click above, which will take you to our blog, which goes more in depth on these five points, as well as information and resources that you can request that we can send you to help guide you through your pole barn home process. As well, subscribe below to always get more information and videos that we bring out in the future. And always remember to build with confidence.